Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our eighth lesson on flight instruments. We're going to be discussing the attitude indicator. The attitude indicator uh, used to be called an artificial horizon because that's essentially what it does. It provides an artificial horizon. And therefore, it is the most important instrument uh, to have functional when flying in cloud because you, in cloud, obviously, you cannot reference outside terrain, uh, the horizon. So you need something, an instrument inside that will tell you which way is up. The attitude indicator, similar to the uh, heading indicator, relies on the principle of gyroscopic inertia. The aircraft, uh, as the aircraft moves, the gyroscope remains fixed in position relative to actually the universe, and the airplane will move around the gyroscope. So if you look on the left, we have uh, in the middle there is kind of a fake uh, wing, a fake airplane view, and then that horizon moves relative to that airplane. And in actual fact, that horizon will uh, remain in place uh, with reference to the universe and, and move relative to the, to the airplane moving around it. So it has a, a gyroscope with a vertical axis, uh, which remains fixed in place and then gimbals and the aircraft moves around that gyroscope. Here's another video from Ryan Anderson explaining how the gyroscope works. attitude indicator is one of your gyro driven instruments. There are several different versions of this instrument but they all have the same principle in common. Most of the variations are very subtle. The attitude indicator is not a required instrument for VFR flight. However it is incredibly important and is required for IFR flight. In other videos, I teach more about the inner workings of this instrument as well as its practical use. But for now, let's just stick to the basics and learn how to read it. The attitude indicator, otherwise known as the artificial horizon, is the one single instrument on your aircraft that not only shows both pitch and bank information, but does this instantaneously and very accurately. With the traditional round gauge or steam gauge as we call it, this instrument will be a gyro-driven instrument. It may be powered by DC electric or AC electric by using an inverter, but typically, especially in training aircraft, this instrument is vacuum or pressure driven. In a glass cockpit, the attitude indicator is electronically driven. These newer versions of the attitude indicator are very reliable and not prone to tumbling. Let's begin with discussing what all attitude indicators have in common. Most attitude indicators will have pitch references that will be numbered for you. They will also have bank indications in increments of 10, 20, and 30 degree increments, as well as 45, 60, and 90. Every indicator will have some representation of the horizon, typically separating a blue sky and a brown or black earth. Each indicator has a representation of your aircraft in some manner, that will help you to visualize your relative attitude. Your best friend for pitch is the center point of that airplane representation. No matter what angle of bank you have, the center dot of that representation or the tip of the delta-shaped representation will define your pitch. This is important whether you are trying to maintain your altitude in a turn or your pitch in a climb or descent.
The pointer on the top of the indicator will precisely display your bank angle as defined by the various bank indicating lines. Some indicators have what is commonly known as a sky pointer. This simply means that the pointer will always point towards the sky. This can be a little confusing when you first start to use one as it seems backwards from the traditional pointer. If you ever run across one of these, just remember to use the airplane representation for your bank and only pay attention to that pointer for the precision of your bank angle once you are established. A glass cockpit or AHARS attitude, heading, and reference system will have the attitude indicator as the background in the entire window, but will read the same way as the older steam gauge. The more sophisticated indicators will have additional instruments, such as a flight director overlaid on the representation, and you can see this in many forms, but that will be a discussion for another time. The attitude uh, indicator is largely error free. However, if the filters become clogged or the parts become worn, the results will end up being inaccurate. Also, if you are doing a lot of uncoordinated turns, there will be a tendency of procession towards the direction of the turn or away from the turn. There are a few limitations to the attitude indicator that you should be aware of. First off, it does require about four to five minutes uh, of power in order to come up for the gyroscope to come up to a, a suitable RPM. So you can't just start your engine and get going. Uh, you do need to let the gyroscope warm up. It only works uh, on a limited number of pitch and roll attitudes. It will not work for, or most of the attitude indicators will not work in 360 degrees in all axes. And during aerobatics, uh, the sudden changes uh, and because of gyroscopic precession will cause the attitude indicator to tumble. So it will just start uh, showing all sorts of strange attitudes and will take some time to write itself. It's often it's called a cage knob. You can pull that and it will write the gyroscope in its proper position. The attitude indicator can be powered by the electrical system. I have an electric motor spinning the gyroscope or by vacuum system, either by a, a engine driven vacuum pump or a venturi that you may see on the outside of the aircraft providing a vacuum. Okay, let's review. The attitude indicator relies on gyroscopic inertia. The gyroscope axis is vertical. The gyroscope does not process due to the axis direction unless there is a slip or a skid in turn. First question, when does the attitude indicator need to be set? A, every 15 minutes. Uh, that's not correct. That's what the heading indicator needs to be. B, on the ground prior to flight. C, never. Or D, depends on how much wear and tear is in the attitude indicator. So this is kind of one of these most correct answers. The most correct answer is on the ground prior to flight. You can turn the knob to make the wings line up with the horizon, depending on where you're sitting. After that, the attitude indicator generally does not ever need to be uh, set. That's really the only knob that you can set it, and uh, that's done on the ground. What is the rate of precession in the attitude indicator? A, 15 degrees per hour, B, 3 degrees every 15 minutes, C, 0 degrees per hour, or D, 15 degrees in 15 minutes. So if we recall, there is no precession in the attitude indicator, or that's the heading indicator that processes. Correct answer, C. That concludes our lesson on uh, the attitude indicator. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you on our next lesson.